What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. The book is entitled Lessons from a Non-Custodial Father at Amazon, Kindle, and Create Space. Link will be in the description box below as usual. Go get it. PayPal link there also to ask me to put it up, so I'll put it up. Thanks, everybody, for supporting. This video is entitled Ghosting Your Way Into Loneliness. So I was doing live yesterday, and Dana brought up ghosting. And I, and I said I should go live talking about ghosting. I might, I'm going to talk about something, but it's not going to be that particularly. Um, people like ghosting folks. You know, get to know you, ghost you. You know, I don't talk to you no more. I remember my homegirl, when Tinder was popping, she had this thing where she just used to like swiping through the silly, saying no, 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 no. And I didn't think about it until last night or after last night that people are ghosting their way into loneliness. And what I mean by that is um, what winds up happening is you are so focused on what you don't want, are so focused on seeing red flags, and running from red flags that truth truth be told you're not necessarily ghosting people you're ghosting relationships and you're ghosting commitment because if somebody has an issue you ghost them now you know deal breaker I get it issue not so much um, people ghost people over things that they could have talked about you know, a miscommunication or a um, just a maybe a bad date, a, a date that went bad, and they could have went on another one and it went good. But this idea of you're not perfect when I meet you, if you're not perfect, it's not the perfect interaction, and you don't speak the perfect words. This, that, and the third. You want an imperfect person to look for perfection in another person. And expect them to say what you want them to say and do. And how you want them to say and do it. And a lot of times, all of this, what you need other people to be, puts you in a position where you're ghosting people right into loneliness. So, what's interesting is not wanting to take credit that you ghost yourself into and to nobody else. And what I mean by ghost, you know, you went out on dates and, and, and you went out on so many, and you went out on a lot of dates and you ghosted a lot of people. But I could say half of the people that you ghosted weren't that bad. They probably were good people. They probably were good for you. But you saw something you didn't like or you thought you didn't like or you assumed that was there that wasn't with those type of people and you, you bounced on them. So when you bounced on them, you might have saw them in a different situation. It was like, man, you know, because it's different if you didn't speak to the person and you saw them out again. You're like, man, I could have hollered at that person, but I didn't. But you actually had the chance to, and it didn't go well. And when the other person doesn't know what they did to get ghosted, a lot of times that's um, immature, insecure. It's kind of like a, a sucker move. Like, because if a date goes bad and the two people know that it went bad, if an interaction goes bad, and both people say, oh, okay, this might be a... a we might want to go on our separate ways after this one. That's understandable. But a lot of times when people get ghosted, they feel like they don't know what happened. They don't even, they can't even explain what happened or how it happened. They don't know. And it's to your discretion. And sometimes you're ghosting people because you got somebody else on your mind or you with somebody else or you, you know, or you don't want to get close to this new person because it, it, it might close the window to this other person that you that you want that um, doesn't necessarily want you at that moment. So you might dip out on them because, you know, ah, I finally got the call. Or you're with somebody and you ghosted this other person because you went back to who you was with. 
But they, but the person you ghosted never knew you was with anybody in the first place. And you wind up ghosting your way into loneliness because you, you you take on these challenges, and you you go on take on these dates, these opportunities to meet people, um, and you wind up actually never connecting. And I think that's the bigger problem when you get accustomed to not connecting, not having conversation, not um, coming to an agreement or, or, or coming to common ground with a person. You know, that's when it gets tricky. Because now all of a sudden, now you got a big problem on your hands that you really can't get along with anybody. All you can do is go somebody. It's kind of like, you know, um, you want, like if somebody hollers at you and you don't holler back, they're supposed to know I don't want to talk to them. Yeah, they'll figure it out, but you could have told them that instead of just never replying. You know what I'm saying? Um, or don't tell somebody good night. I'm going to holler at you later and don't never holler at him later, you know? I think intercourse comes into play. If you get what you want, you ghost them, right? I got it. I'm out. And if you keep doing that, you might want to build a connection with somebody, but you don't necessarily know how to connect or that person that you want to connect with doesn't want to connect with you. So you ghosted your way into loneliness because you just flat out karma. Um, same thing when you use people for, for dates and meals and whatnot, right? You ghosted all these people after you got what you wanted from them. And then you go through this drought where nobody, where, where nobody's taking you out. Because you don't know how to appreciate a date. You just, it just, you just can't handle that. So what winds up happening is... Now you're in this situation where um, if you can't use somebody, you can't communicate. And since you can't communicate without using somebody, you know, people are going to leave you alone. And you're going to be left with you. You got to use yourself, you know. To me, I think it creates a problem because it's not a breakup. It's not a, um, and, and people, people act like, you know, if I go to the person, I don't owe them anything. Like if it was a breakup, they might want to know what happened or want closure. And I get it's not like that. But, th but the thing about it is if you lead somebody on and say that you cool and, but you really not, that's what they're like, wait. So all that was fake? That whole situation was fake. So you were smiling in my face all the time trying to take my place. Backstabbers. So what are they supposed to take from that? What are you supposed to take from that? Because now you become a salesman and hopefully you become a good salesman to a degree, right? To the point where you're going to mess around and you're going to run out of sales pitches. Because at the end of the day, What's going to wind up happening? You're going to mess around and not know when a good deal is sitting right in front of you. And, and I've seen people run from good people. You know, because to be around that person, sometimes you ghost, in, you ghost yourself into loneliness because you actually are running from commitment to the point where when some people come along that you, that are, that you know are good and you know you should probably try to work out with them, your inner need to be free or your inner fear of putting in work and effort in a relationship, you ghost the person. You, It's not really them, it's you. You're running from them. So because you're running from them, that's all you're going to get. You know what I'm saying? That's all you're going to get. And then you're going you're gonna to run from so many people in so many ways that you're going to run out of real estate. And it's just going to be you. You know? In, in in the nothingness of 
uh, of all the people you ghosted. You have a graveyard of people you ghosted and no real people to be around. That's just my opinion. Catch y'all on the next one. Like, share, subscribe. Peace.